Seventeen. If we go out there and give it everything that we've got, we can make this happen. Now or never. Heidi, you're no stranger to the Selena story, having appeared in the first, having appeared in the original movie that we all love from 20 odd years ago. What does it feel like to come full circle with this story? It's surreal. You know, it's, it's a, like you said, it's a full circle. Um, I was much younger when I did um, the movie. So that was like my young perspective, you know, discovering who Selena was, discovering the story for the first time, like everyone else and I think now stepping into it many years later um, and as a mom myself it's a whole different perspective Um, it almost felt to me like peeking into my own childhood through my mom's perspective you know because I, I lived through all of the 80s and 90s at that same age and my mom is is very similar to Marcela as well, very nurturing, very caring, but at the same time, um, strong when she needed to be. Um, So the experience was was definitely different um, coming into it the second time around. (laughs) Can I say that mom fashions in the 80s and 90s did mom no favors? They made moms (laughs) look like 100. They were like sexless, like big glasses and the sweatshirts. Yeah, (laughs) big shoulder pads. (laughs) It was rough. But I kind of liked uh, Noemi, like the like pompadours that you were working on. Like I was a big yeah. fan of those. Thank you. I really enjoyed rocking them. You know, it gave me it felt made me feel some type of vibe. You know, it was it was nice to um, give that '80s love to and leaning into the look and not and not being afraid to to be so bold. <laughs> I was wondering, you know, Suzette, who you play in the show, was the producer on the show, and I was thinking it must have been a weird for her to be like that's me, but it's not me. But like, that looks like that's my outfit. And then I was wondering, you know, if you ever, if you talked to her, did she give you any tips about being her, which is weird? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so we, we met her two weeks before we wrapped. So it was a beautiful experience to have the opportunity to work on our create our characters objectively, and then to, you know, really have a closing experience with Suzette and and that was honestly a time where she actually asked us a lot of questions and and we bonded with her and and it was really really nice she provided um off the top um to give us a space to work um she provided a lot of material that's not available to the public so that we could really have an understanding of our characters and our family dynamics and the story and without that there I mean it just gave me so much to be able to to do my part in and sharing this new version or excuse me this new presentation of our two-part series and selena's story and legacy is there a song that you guys did that you were like oh yeah this song is the bomb like something that you really like gained appreciation for while you're working on it it it, i always loved this song um so to be able to play it was was so much more um strong for me to to give to it and um, I would say it's No Debes Jugar. Um, that's one of my favorite songs of all time. That's actually the test I would give people. I'm like, oh, you're a Selena fan? Do you know this song? And if you didn't know this song, I was like, you're, you, you're, you're like one of the fans that it just doesn't go past Bidi Bidi Bum Bum and Como La Flor. You know, I was one of those back in the day. And now I'm like, well, I know how to play it. <laughs> so it was definitely fun to have that opportunity to um, have more of my love invested into Selena's music and Suzette's portrayal specifically through that song. When I think about being on stage and you on the bass and Suzette on the drums, nothing else matters. Selena. Y los niños. 